if red teaming is easy, you're doing it wrong. So on a summer morning back in 2013, if you would have told me that a little bit later that day, I'd be sending a wire transfer from my laptop for $10 million, I would have laughed. Afterwards, I was just surprised to not be leaving the building in handcuffs. But I was, as this was a red team. And right this very minute, at your hotel's parent company, at your insurance provider, your place of work, your school, somebody might be entering their, credi their, their credentials into a phishing site. Maybe it includes their second factor. Or a product is being abused. Maybe it's your own abusing other customers, or maybe it's facilitating an international crime. Or maybe an unsuspecting guest is looking to gain sensitive access to a sensitive area of your building. Or people are gonna be breaking in tonight to slip a wireless keylogger in. Maybe an out-of-date web server is just compromised or uh, you're missing a access control on your cloud storage bucket, giving access to hundreds of gigabytes of sensitive customer information, client IPs, user information. Or the product you sell was just used to facilitate a fraudulent financial scheme. This leads to regulatory impact and you know, dis disrupts your IPO or has problems for new investments. Or maybe a disgruntled contractor or a new employee is walking away with hundreds of gigabytes of sensitive information or customer data. And after you discover this problem or breach, incident, and you wake up your CSO at 3 a.m., you don't want to find out it's one of these folks, the FBI's cyber most wanted. You want to find out it's somebody like this, like the red team I work with here. But this isn't you know, about red teaming at Facebook. It's really about moving red teaming forward. So as Tim Malcolmvetter puts it, who leads the Walmart red team, he said, we're gonna kick in the door, but we're not gonna let anyone else in after. And Reciprocal Strategies also wrote in a blog post that being on a red team just boils down to being assumption challengers. And I, I think that fits well. But with all the different security teams, software development life cycles, compliance, bug bounty, pen testing. Do we really need a red team too? Well, I would say yes, because a red team is one of the most effective ways to measure if the things you are doing, all those teams that you have, that you should have, are they working? Is it, and it's a realistic test, that's the key. After all, how do you know your missile defense system works without an actual missile test? Or maybe more relatable to this in the room, how do you know your backup solution works if you've never pretended a drive failed? And what steps do you follow? Does it work? Just like you check date on an old milk carton, you trust, but you verify with a sniff. Now, because every red team talk has to cover this, I have to basically go over why a red team is not a pen test and vice versa. So in a pen test, your scope is very wide, but your depth is shallow you typically have a, a short amount of time to find vulnerabilities, both small and large, and you discuss the various fixes and impacts, and maybe there's a small proof of concept, but it generally stops there. In a red team, you're focusing on depth and an objective. You have to look at the entire attack surface, and you have to avoid detection the entire time. You wanna find some vulnerabilities, chain them together to perform an attack in a real way and perform impact in a real way, and then later discuss the fixes, both strategic and tactical. A red team almost always uses multiple vulnerabilities, both people-based and technical-based, just like real attackers. Once this shortest path is closed, a follow-up red team maybe finds another, hopefully more difficult path. A pen test will show you if the sensitive data could be accessed. A red team will steal it and show it to you. And whatever the results are, they're concrete. Your bike is either there when you leave or it's not. You can't argue it wasn't stolen, and that can really drive improvements. So before Facebook at a Fortune 500, myself and a small team were tasked with doing a red team against the production network. We were just given a chair and Cat5 cable, and really the, the general architecture we worked out was something like this. 
corporate hosts would log in through a two-factor jump host, gain access to production. It's a fairly standard architecture. So after compromising a local misconfigured Tomcat instance, we were able to compromise then a server management system and use that to pivot to the jump host. So once on the jump host, not only have we bypassed the two-factor authentication, but we can leverage legitimate credentials to gain access to production. Once in production, we decided that the most impactful stolen data would just be the millions of credit card data that they had. Now after reading through some configuration files, gaining access to the database servers where the, where the credit cards are stored, we found them all encrypted, right? Like, oh, PC, like compliance, making our job hard. Uh, but, so we could, could we still do this? Well, yes. So we played the, well, where's the decryption game for a while um, until coming across an HSM configuration. Again, like, ugh. Uh, but we still weren't worried because we thought, well, rather than try to extract the key from the HSM, which should be impossible, why don't we just ask the HSM to decrypt the cards for us? So we glued some Python with some ancient HSM APIs and some database queries, and a few hours later, we decrypted some 400,000 credit cards. And that was enough to say, you know, leaving it running for a little longer, we could have got millions and so forth. And there was a lot of improvements from this, from, you know, detection standpoint, logging and so forth. So red teaming, specifically internal red teaming, has been gaining a lot of popularity. There are frameworks now, methodologies, tools, and supposed automation frameworks, and this is all good. And a lot of red teams, myself included, imagine that we're climbing this big cliff and it's hard, but we're pretty high up. However, I'd argue that what we're currently climbing looks something like this. Uh, and I won't make a lot of friends by saying that red teaming really needs to grow up. Many red teams and blue teams and those new to red teaming kind of think it works something like this. You run Kali Linux, you run a tool called Responder and you get some hashes and you pass those hashes to Active Directory and you work your way up to domain admin and then you go have some beers. Now, this is what I call winning and going home. And it just perpetuates the idea that offense is easy, that you just break things, and it doesn't really matter if the attack is realistic or if there was a goal. And we should be creating new tools. We should be creating, working on new platforms because the attackers surely are. So what if we want to challenge our own assumptions? What if we red team red teaming? So why does it need to be hard? Well, first, it's critical to important, it's critical to understand your blue team's detection gaps and be able to highlight the areas that you want to improve the most. It can be hard, but providing realistic attacks is a key assistance. This is one of the biggest time, one of the biggest times that you see a security improvement at a company is right after a breach. In really, the best analogy I think is a sparring partner, right? One's not dominating the other, but your red team or your, your sparring partner is slowly leveling you up so that when you're in the ring for real, it matters. And I have this, uh, I have to owe this analogy to uh, somebody that I work with named Nat Hirsch. Keeping things real, we have to perform the attacks that companies will actually face, but also focus on the attacks that they're going to face. We have to level up our blue team and actually make our, our job as the red team harder. Tim Malcolm Better also put it recently as saying that beating a video game again and again on the same difficulty level is boring. So why else should red teaming be hard? Well, there are lots of hidden costs and required back-end work. Now, state actors and other attackers, they have some of these limitations, but others they don't have to contend with. That said, I wanted to quickly touch on compartmentalization. So apart from being hard to say, Compartmentalization is actually hard to do, uh, even for real attackers. So in an operation that Kaspersky dubbed apple juice, suspected North Korean state actors, also known as the Lazarus Group, created a fake cryptocurrency program. They put a backdoor in that called Fall Chill, and then they decided to actually try to sell this via legitimate looking company. Now I don't know how many cryptocurrency programs you guys use, but this actually looks like one of the better ones. And ironically, it does look legitimate. It also works on Windows, Mac OS. The website also appears legitimate. It even discusses breaches and, crypt and security problems at cryptocurrency companies. And ironically, it even claims to be verified by Kaspersky, 
the very company that would later go and do the investigation and publish the results of the attack. However, when looking closely, they made some fairly comical mistakes. Looking at the malware traffic, Kaspersky noticed that the malware is talking to the exact same ISP in the Netherlands that the legitimately uh, looking hosted website is on. And when you look at the domain names, one of them is tied to a ramen shop in Chicago. But you know, maybe that's uh, the side business for their successful cryptocurrency development program. <laughs> maybe. Uh, the other address was actually a trailer in the woods in Michigan. So other things they forgot, well, they used the same RC4 key than a prior attack campaign. They used the same actual uh, ISP in the Netherlands and host as a different financial attack earlier, a year earlier. So I don't know about you, but it seems like they need to spend a little bit less time on their Bitcoin application development and more on compartmentalization. So why else should red teaming be hard? Well, part of a red team is just finding what's missing among all the pieces on the board. There are layers upon layers of attack trees. You're looking at the entire chessboard trying to find the easiest move to checkmate without your opponent knowing anything's happening. Everyone who's ever written or used an exploit knows it can be a lot of fun, but popping calc as your proof of concept is just that, it's a proof of concept. Going from your exploit design to exploit weaponization and testing, it's difficult, it's tedious and time consuming. One wrong move and your exploit blows up in your face, your implant's caught, or your attack campaign fails. Weeks or even months of preparation flushed. Beyond exploits, good offense also means productizing your attack. This can be painful or often boring work. Turning that exploit into uh, a full attack, making it work on different versions of the operating system, on IPv6, bypass antivirus, that's all fairly mundane, but it's typically required unless you're using off-the-shelf tools, which are already blocked or detected, right? Ask anyone that does physical red teaming how long they've spent crawling in ditches or waiting in bathrooms. And on the non-technical side, it's also critical to be your blue team's champion, not their enemy. After all, they're the ones facing, they're the, ones facing the real adversaries. They're the ones on the front line. At the end of the day, we're all just trying to keep the company safer. So when you deal with vulnerabilities a lot, another difficulty is sometimes you can't actually use what you find. Red teams might come across a vulnerability that you have to publish it right away because it puts the company at risk right now. You can't use it later or stage it later. And you know, being good security neighbors, we have to suggest detection fixes and fixes for patches and so forth that actually make our lives more difficult. And I can't avoid talking about, talking about OPSEC as well. It's highly important that our operational security as red teams and our, uh, and our ability to avoid attribution is sometimes better than real attackers. If your blue team needs to go through the same motions, if they, if they know it's a red team or not, after they detect it, uh, because you want that realism. You want people to be a little bit stressed for a while because that's a good thing to measure and make sure that they can still operate while under that pressure. You want to be pushing the limits as a red team. You want to imitate real attackers. However, there's some things that you can't, you just can't do. They either involve a third party or they involve a meeting with your legal team and that, that's no fun. You want to aim high, but you want to avoid what I call red teaming extremism. So repelling from a stolen helicopter in the middle of the night while wearing camouflage might sound cool. Okay, that, that is cool, but it's just not going to happen. Even in 99% of the threat models out there, it's just not going to happen. And even if it's in, most, even in the most simple form, physically breaking into a building, it might be successful, it might achieve your goal, but is it realistic? Well, for some of us it is, but just be cognizant. It's also key to help your blue team with their kill chain. So maybe they can't catch all of a given state actor, but you wanna help them get good at spotting a certain type of phishing or an initial foothold. Maybe they're worried about a given type of command and control, or you wanna point out that they have a, uh, a uh, weakness for uh, command and control over DNS that you want to illustrate as part of a red team. 
Or they could be good at detecting some types of lateral movement, but not a new trending method. I say that red team needs to move beyond attack. It needs to be moved beyond purely being thought of as testing just the blue team. It even has to go beyond the cyber. So expanding is not always easy. Some of these are new areas and they require more collaboration, either with internal teams or potentially external teams. And maybe a little bit more research is involved. But this adversarial mindset that we have as breakers really can help in a lot of other areas of organizations. Oh. Sorry, my slides are not advancing. So one operation we did last summer is we had a peer under a secret subcontract apply for another internal position, get hired, be completely uh, unknown to the company, and essentially then start slowly acting as a spy for several weeks. They accessed a dead drop that we had set up, and we gave them instructions, search for this, search for that, send screenshots back, and then we basically played dumb. We played the attackers. If I was sitting in a lab in North Korea, what would I actually do? What would I actually see and what would I ask for? And this worked to test our internal abuse and other teams to spot this type of behavior. And insider attacks are across a lot of different organizations. And they've incurred from everything from government agencies to banks and software companies, medical firms, auto manufacturers, According to a survey last, just last year, over 400 people were surveyed that work in information security, and over 50% of them said that they had suffered some form of insider attack. So to conclude, a red team's job should always be getting more difficult, not less. As a red teamer, if you find your job being easy, figure out a way to make it harder. And not everyone has the same scope, threat model, or team size. You need to work within your limitations, but at least point them out. And it's fair to say that different companies have different priorities, but just make sure that your findings are acted on. And realism is very important. It can be okay to start with Zoom breach, but make sure you illustrate that first. Try to force your actions, your tools, your methods to fit whatever assumed threat actor you're trying to emulate. Cheat as little as you can, play act the part, maybe even work Moscow hours. You have to understand the ways to be the most effective. Highlight the unknown risks. Now, I'm not saying that we should all try to just be full in on purple teaming. It's important that red teaming keeps your, you keeps an arm's length. You don't want to get tunnel vision. You have to be challenging assumptions. So red teaming needs to be hard. And I'd strongly say that red teaming needs to be in more places. Just don't let your adversarial model become internally adversarial. Of course, break things. That's what we want to do. But stay helpful and stay real. Compromises, abuse, attacks. It's not a matter of when, but how. Don't you want to know where you stand? After all, when $10 million goes missing, wouldn't you want to find out it's just your red team? Thanks.